That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. All right, so today's Daily Dose of Stupid. I'm going to have to start renaming this thing the Daily Dose of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez because she just seems to be in the middle of everything all the time, and she's usually the dumbest one in the room. Uh, and I, I say that jeeringly. She is my favorite House representative now. I like her far more than any of the others, even the, the conservative ones like uh, Gary Palmer and Mo Brooks. I got to say... AOC has got to be my favorite one at this point, not because of her voting record, but because she makes my job easier. So let's go ahead and go to one clip. This is from uh, a Martin Luther King Day event that she was doing where she was talking about this and talking about global warming. So go ahead. And I think that the part of it that is generational is that millennials and people and you know gen z and all these folks that come after us are looking up and we're like the world is going to end in 12 years if we don't address climate change and your biggest issue is your your biggest issue is how are we going to pay for it mm -hmm. and like this is the war this is our world war ii mm -hmm. and I, I, I can't even process that. So there you have, and I know that the sound was a little bit low, and I apologize for that, but Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez sitting there, serious as a heart attack, saying the world is going to end in 12 years. Like like, like, like the world is, is like going to end in like, like 12 years, and you're like worried about how to like pay for it and stuff? I don't see how anyone ever took this woman seriously. She doesn't come off as a serious person when she's talking about these things, but there she is, completely dead face serious, saying that the world is going to end in 12 years. But, you know, even though she has a tendency for gaffes and she's kind of known for saying dumb things or overplaying things, it's not as though this is an Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez only problem. Let's rewind, because... I'm old enough to remember, and I'm the same age as Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, I'm old enough to remember when Al Gore, in An Inconvenient Truth back in 2006, said that in 10 years, we will be past the point of no return when it comes to global warming. Yeah, in 2006! So 10 years after that would have been 2016. It's currently 2019. We've kind of moseyed on past that point. And yet, Al Gore is still out there saying that we need to change things or, or now we're going to be past the point of no return. And see, that's the thing. They keep giving these outrageous, outlandish claims that unless we do everything that they say right now and basically turn over our lives to stopping global warming, then the world's just going to end in a decade. And it never happens. We never come even close to doing the things that they suggest that we have to do. And yet, the world still keeps going on. In fact, if you're looking at global warming, not really any different than it was back in 2006. In fact, we had an 18-year pause when it came to global time, uh, climate uh, temperatures going up, if you're looking at the oceanic view. So if you're looking at ocean temperatures which is a, a much more accurate way of measuring global temperature because it's not usually affected by environmental factors quite as much. For example, you can't have a thermostat on top of a blacktop in the middle of the ocean, or you can't have a thermostat in a particularly sunny area that just happens to be experiencing more heat than normal when you're looking at ocean temperatures. And so if you're looking at that, we had a 15 to 18 year pause in the rise of global climate, in the rise of global temperatures. And so you're looking at this person saying that in 12 years, the world's just going to be gone. There's going to be no more world if we don't do something to stop it. Well, if we're that close to the end, I doubt there's really anything that we could do to stop it at this point anyway. But nonetheless, uh, one of the things that I thought was really insane is that she said that this is our generation's World War II. All right. You know I'm a stats and numbers guy. Let's do a statistical comparison. World War II killed 72 million people 
and that's on both sides. Six million alone just in the Holocaust. But if you're looking at it worldwide, looking at the problem and the scope of it, 72 million people, which was roughly 3 to 5% of the world's population back then, I mean, you're talking about a massive chunk of the world's population just snuffed out by World War II. Let's compare that to global warming. As of now, the, the death toll with global warming is zero. None. Not a single life lost on account of global warming. Not a single person even injured because of global warming. And yet, somehow, that's our World War II. That global warming is just as dangerous as the Nazis. And by the way, what's hilarious about this is that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is a self-proclaimed socialist. The Nazis is short for National Socialist Workers Party of Germany. That's who the Nazis were. And so she may have a, a different flavor of the same ice cream, but it's still ice cream. She says democratic socialism, which is really just, you know, a, a hair away from national socialism anyway. All the basic policies are still in place. The only difference is who the policy should benefit. That's the only difference they have. But nonetheless, she's saying that the Nazis were as big a concern as global warming and yet continues to be a socialist. How does that make any sense? And she's saying that that is our World War II. Well, if so... It's doing a really terrible job at killing as many people as World War II did. 72 million deaths versus zero deaths. Yeah, I'm going to say that World War II was a much bigger priority to the greatest generation than global warming is to us. And I want you to also to point this out to you. This is a woman who is constantly going on the different cable shows, and we're actually going to show a clip of that in a second, talking about immigration. And there are 15,000 Americans that are either assaulted, killed, or raped by illegal immigration. 15,000 in the past couple of years. And yet, that's a manufactured crisis. That's something we ought not worry about. That's something that, oh, that's just Donald Trump fear-mongering. And yet, global warming has killed no people. And we're supposed to just throw all of our money into that because you can't just worry about like how you're going to pay for it. So you have to throw all your money at that problem, even though it's killed no people. And we're not supposed to give $5.7 billion to build a border wall to help stave off the problems at the border. How does anyone even get to a worldview that screwed up? How does anyone even get to a worldview where 15,000 Americans being assaulted or killed or raped, not a crisis. But the fact that the temperature might grow up just a little bit is going to cause the world to end in 12 years, and that's a crisis that we need to throw absolutely everything at and just ignore it. That should be given a blank check, but the one that's actually causing deaths and actually causing trauma and human tragedy, that one should be ignored completely. That one we should not even worry about. <sighs> I just don't understand how she got to that point. Even the people that wrote the Paris Climate Accords, the ones that are super concerned about global warming, their estimate was that if you engaged in the Paris Climate Accords and were able to do all of the policies included in them, that that's going to make a 0.4% degree Celsius increase. That's going to keep that increase from happening by the year 2116. So within a hundred years, the climate change people, the ones that thought that it was important enough to spend billions of dollars on the Paris Climate Accords for each country, their scientists are saying, if we do this in a hundred years, the difference that it will make is that 0.4% degrees Celsius, that increase will not come to pass. Well, then where is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez getting the world's going to end in 12 years? Because 0.4 degrees Celsius does not, to me, sound like a cataclysmic event, and that's not supposed to happen for another 100 years. So I don't know where she's getting this idea that in 12 years the world's just going to be gone. I guess maybe she was watching An Inconvenient Truth and thought it was a recent release. I don't know. But um, it astounds me that she doesn't even know that because, again, I'm 29 and she's also 29. We're the same age, born in the same year. 
And I, I don't really understand where that's coming from. But let's just take the ridiculousness of her analogy and play it out. Let's just pretend as though the world actually was ending in 12 years. Let's say there actually was a universally agreed upon cataclysmic extinction level event that was going to take place. Let's say that there was an asteroid coming and we knew that it was going to hit in about 12 years and it was the size of the moon. So, I mean, it's basically just going to wipe out the entire planet. Even if we knew that to be the case, even if we knew that was the case, is how you're going to pay for it still a ridiculous question? Because, of course, that becomes a priority. Of course, that becomes something important that we all have to worry about. But if we wind up wrecking the economic system of every single economy in the world to do so, then wouldn't that be a big problem? Shouldn't there be some concerns about that? And shouldn't there be people asking some questions about, you think there might be a better way to do this, a way that doesn't wreck the economy of every single country on this planet? And another thing, when you're talking about a policy that is so ridiculously expensive that it's going to cost roughly the entire budget of the entire world, because remember, her policies, according to Vox.com, not exactly a right-leaning news site, we're saying that about $42 trillion is going to be what it would cost over 10 years. There's only about $50 trillion on Earth if you're adding up all the currency. And so you're talking about something that would eat up that much. Shouldn't there be somebody that says, uh, do you think maybe there's at least a cheaper way to do this? Do you think maybe we could wait until better technology comes out and then kind of work on solving that problem? To build a giant laser to destroy the asteroid or whatever? Are you saying that cost just shouldn't play into it whatsoever and you should never ask questions about cost even if it's universally agreed upon? Even in that scenario, the cost is an important thing to think about. And so the only thing that this is really going back to is she's pitching a hissy fit that her stupid liberal policies are going to cost so much that it would be impossible to pay for them. And she's upset that people keep asking her, well, how do you pay for it? How are you going to make this work financially? She just doesn't want to answer the question, and because of that, she's angry, and she's trying to find an out. That's really all it boils down to. Oh, hey. What are you still doing here? Video's over. I'm off the clock, so go watch another one of my videos or something. Or better yet, you could subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell, and if you do that, then you'll get a notification when I actually am on the air and you can watch me then. In the meantime, I'm going to take a nap.